Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's event, Digital Assessment Best Practices for Texas Educators. At Edulastic, we value helping educators connect with one another to share what's working, so we're excited to host this event today. Today, we are excited to offer this special event for Texas educators and presented by Texas educators. You can expect to learn tips and tools, workflows, and best practices for online instruction using Edulastic. You'll learn how educators across the state are using Edulastic to deliver TEKS aligned questions and prepare for STAR testing. We'll also share where you can find free STAR practice tests in both English and Spanish. Today's feature presenters come from all over the state of Texas and are members of the Edulastic Innovator team. And we are so grateful to have them here with us today and are excited to hear the great content they have to share during their presentations. We know you're gonna love what they have to share. We realize that many areas of Texas are experiencing severe power outages this week, and we are thinking of everyone who is impacted by these severe weather outages as well. And we hope that everyone um, is able to stay safe and that the power utilities will be restored soon. We are so glad to have you all here today with us. And um, I'm gonna go on to the next slide to talk a bit more about today's event. So welcome to today's event. And again, we're so glad to have you here. This event is in a Zoom webinar format um, instead of a meeting. So everyone who's on, um, your camera and audio are not on. And even though we don't see you, we hope you're comfortable and just as excited as we are for what's in store. A couple reminders and housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, don't be shy. So please set that chat to send panelists and attendees. We encourage conversation, collaboration, uh, and we encourage you to share what you think is cool. If you have any questions, all these things. If you have questions for our presenters or any of us on the Edge Elastic team, please ask them in the question and answer box so we can make sure to get to them either during the presentation or at the end of the presentation. Uh, we also encourage you to share your insights and tweet the cool things you learned today using the hashtag below if you have a Twitter account. We also have time for des designated Q&A at the end of the presentation. We'll have about 10 minutes um, to answer questions that come through. And if you miss anything, no worries, because we'll be sharing the event's YouTube link with you 24 hours from now in an email. That link will come uh, from Zoom. And if you have any questions about anything, you can also respond to that email and they'll go right to my inbox. Uh, the email will also have information that will allow you to use the email as your professional development certificate if desired. Again, happy to have you all here. Uh, one more thing, again, if you're going to be joining us um, in the Twitter conversation, we have uh, hashtag Edulastic Live and uh, the Twitter handles of our presenters today, as well as Edulastic. My name is Ileana Betancourt. I'm your host. And for the last 10 years, I've been working to help connect educators to awesome resources. And for the last five years, I've been here at Edge Elastic to do just that. Um, I'm also joined by my two colleagues, uh, Abel Gonzalez and Jan Moody, who will be online to help answer any questions and make sure that today's presentation runs smoothly. A couple of things about Edge Elastic. It's easy to use, tech enhanced, and has instant data. It contains over 50 plus tech enhanced items. I also wanted to share a couple of quick facts. So over 1 billion questions have been answered on Edge Elastic. Edge Elastic serves over 4,700 districts, 4,000 teachers, and 9 million students. And according to very conservative calculations we made last year, Edge Elastic has saved teachers over 250 years of grading. Um, so that's a pretty cool fact. Takes you all the way back to around the time when George Washington crossed the Delaware River. It's pretty mind blowing. All right. If you're new to Edge Elastic, we do encourage you to bookmark our Edge Elastic 101 YouTube video. Jan's going to share that link in the chat. It'll walk you through how the free accounts work and everything that's available to your fingertips. There's a lot of STAR content in Edge Elastic. Uh, Jan can share this link as well to our STAR page that will help direct you to uh, where all this content is. So if you type STAR into the search bar, you will pull up all these assessments that have been released from the Texas Department of Education and you can uh, assign them directly to your students. They come in both English and Spanish. 
Great. And that brings us to our main presentations today. So I'd like to start out by introducing Jessica Ontiveros. Uh, Jessica Ontiveros is an eighth grade math teacher and math department head in Laredo, Texas. She's going on her 14th year of teaching middle school. And as a lifelong learner, she is always taking up new challenges, especially when it comes to technology. And she has been using and enjoying Edge Elastic for the past three years. Jessica, I'd love to invite you to turn on your video and unmute and take it from here. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the webinar. I'm kind of nervous, but <laughs> I'm going to think that you all are my students. Uh, my name is Jessica Ontiveros, and I am an eighth grade math teacher. Um, I am in charge of uh, sixth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and algebra one at my middle school. I work for United ISD. Um, I've been teaching for ever already. It feels like forever, honestly, uh, more than a decade. And uh, honestly, I had told myself, I'm only going to do it for a decade. And now I'm over a decade and it's like, OK, I'm going to do it forever. <laughs> uh, here's a, a family picture. Um, and of course, I could have chosen a better picture with, where both of my babies were actually looking at the camera. But that is reality. You know, um, everything is so unexpected when it comes to technology. Uh, not only to our families, but to our students as well. So I chose it on purpose. Um, next, please. How do I use Edge Elastic? Uh, I use it for so many reasons. Um, they have pre-made assessments, uh, star release tests. It's the new feature that just recently was added. Uh, it prepares students for online assessments. I know that um, the STAR test in 2022 will be 100% online. So this is a tremendous, awesome tool that, you know, as a teacher, you can utilize to prepare the students um, for the future. Uh, I create and assign class assessments or practice assessments as well. I love it because it allows you to differentiate instruction. Um, you can allow them to take more than one time, uh, choose different levels. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many features is, it has. It also allows you to see the grading part real time. So if the student is getting a correct answer or a wrong answer, you can see it uh, live. Also, it allows you to give immediate feedback and constructive feedback. So I'm going to show you uh, how I go over those main points with my students. Um, if you can go to the next one, please. So like I said, there's so many uh, release star tests for math for six, seven, eighth, and algebra one. What I did is I actually went through every single star test and I broke it down by categories. I know at our campus and at our district, sometimes we like to get uh, the star questions and categorize them by category. So uh, what I did is, I got 2016 star release and I got category one, category two, category three, category four, and it's already broken down into um, an assessment on its own. So instead of having 42 items or 38 items on the test, now you're gonna have only the ones that pertain to the category. So if you want to have access to this, you will. I made them all public, you can search either by title or um, I'm not sure if you can search by person, uh, Eliana. I, I think she can tell us right now. Yes, you can, possible. You can, yep, you can enter uh, your name as the author and these will come up. Oh, okay, neat. So you can just type in my name, Jessica Ontiveros, or you can also go ahead and email me at jontiveros at uisd.net and I can um, forward you those links. But like I said, they're all public now from sixth, seven, and eighth grade. And they're all by, they're all of them by category. Um, these are sixth grade. If you can go to the next one, please. This is seventh grade and the next one, please. And this is eighth grade. So can I share my screen, please? Yes, please do. 
Yes. Okay. So, okay. All right. So, as you can see, the way I created each assessment was as follows. You go into the dashboard, you are going to see all of your classes set up by now. If you are currently using it, if you're not using it, it doesn't matter. You're going to have the content bundles down here. You're going to select the start test. And it's very important to always clear everything if you're going to search by topic. If you click directly here, it's going to take you to the start test. Um, you can use the filter for grades. So, for example, if you go into sixth grade, it's going to give you all the start release for all of the start exams. So you're going to have math, you're going to have science reading, all of them. If you go into mathematics, you're going to see the four years that were released. From here, um, you can choose whichever year you want. You go into more and you will have options. You can either see the details, you can clone it, you can preview or you can assign it. So what I did I went ahead and cloned the test and then it will allow you to keep the reference to the original items and then you can clone each them individually later so you will continue you can title the test so I'm just going to go ahead and title it 20, 2017 grade six math category one uh, you go into the next tab which is to add items, okay, here you can either add any items that you can search on the search bar here, or you can actually go straight into the test because remember we're dealing with a test, so I'm not going to add any more items to the current test I, that I currently have. So once I'm, I'm in the test, I can actually delete any of the items that do not pertain to the category. And I just go basically to, okay, let's say in category one, there's 12 items, then I'm just going to select the 12 items that pertain to that. And that's basically what I do. Uh, it's very important that you go ahead and change the points because if you do not, it will remain at one. So if you want them to equal to 100, then you're just gonna have to divide, and divide them equally. Uh, after you choose the items that you want in your assessment, you can go into settings and this is where the magic comes true. Uh, I just found that something through my students and it was, I don't know if, whether it was good or bad, but if you go into practice, it has two options on the te test type. If you go into practice, it actually, if you, are not careful, it actually gives them three tries per question. That means that it will allow the student to check their answer three times before they actually submit. So imagine, I mean, I was wondering why they were getting so many hundreds. I was like, oh my God, I feel so good about myself. And before I knew it, I was like, oh my God, I forgot that it was a practice and it, al it allows them to check the answer three times before they submit. So yeah, make sure that you're very careful. Uh, when you go into class assessment, uh, I always choose release the scores only and all or nothing. You either get it right or wrong. And in the section, the tries per question, it goes automatically to zero. I just noticed that they have the anti-cheating uh, features and the complete test in one sitting. And there was one restrict question navigation. This is the one that I'm probably going to be using um maybe soon when the power is back it gives you a notification if the student actually left your assessment and they navigated into the web or they went away from the edge elastic page so this is a super neat feature and also it allows you to write uh the scratch pad so you can enable it or disable so this is pretty awesome for math because we always want them to show work. So the scratch pad is definitely a must. And that's basically what I do here. Um, and you have the link to share, to print or to save. You go into saving and then you can go ahead and publish. 
you can make it private, share it with your school or district or to everyone. Like I said, all of my assessments have been shared publicly. So you can, if you're interested in, in um, using some of my assessments that are already made, don't forget that you just need to search for Jessica Ontiveros and you'll be able to see all of um, the ones that I've currently have. Uh, if you can take me back to the presentation, please. Oh. There you go. On the next slide, please. Okay. So why is Edulastic so amazing, especially for Texas? Um, I don't know if you knew this, but in 2022, 2023, new item types are gonna be coming up in our STAR exams. Because it's gonna be online, they're gonna make it more um, interesting, if you wanna say it like that. It will have, uh, for math, it will have the multi-select, uh, the constructed response, the drag and drop, the hotspot, the, in the text entry, the sliders, and the graphing. So, this is very important to consider because Edulastic offers not only this options, but many more that can totally train your students on how to be exposed to those. Remember that most of the times we're, well, I am traditional um, most of the times and I only give them the text entry or the multiple choice. So the students are kind of already used to those two types. So Edulastic allows you to introduce so many more types for them to get prepared and for them to train. Uh, next, please. So as you can see uh, here, there's a two part question um, that you can find on Edge Elastic or you can actually create. Next, please. There is a text entry in this option. Next. And then there's another text entry. Notice that it has five boxes here. So who knows, maybe they'll have one box for us, for the students to input or two, uh, who knows, but at least we are gonna get them trained to multiple versions. Next, please. This one, they actually allows you for the, it's a uh, drop down menu. So I actually like this one. It was very neat when one of my, when it was assigned to one of my students they were able to see, uh, they actually, some of them asked like, how do you answer? And I said, oh, you're gonna have to click on the arrow. So this is a very good option for you to start training them on that, okay? Next, please. You have the drag and drop, next. And then there's also a drag and drop but with um, graphs, next. And this one is pretty important because, um, for algebra one, they're gonna have to actually graph the linear equation. Next, please. Or graph inequalities. Okay, I'll get, I guess go back a little bit. There you go. So as you can see, uh, all of these options are already embedded with Edge Elastic. You're gonna be able to see all of these kinds of questions are already made. These questions I did not create, I actually found them. Um, so you can just type in your topic that you want and then each question actually has a description on the type of question that it shows. Uh, if you can see my screen right here. So for example, if I start looking for test items um, right here. You can see that this one is multiple choice, multiple choice, uh, expression multi-part. So each item actually tells you what kind of question it is. If it's a multi-part, if it's a matching table. So that's what's pretty neat about Edge Elastic. Um, and let me go back to the presentation. Next, please. And this is what it comes down to uh, why this is the main reason why I use Edge Elastic because in this section, when you assign it, you are actually seeing real time live how they are doing here. 
Notice that in this section, you can see that some students have submitted, it will say graded. Some students are in progress, they're still working on it. Uh, but I, what I really wanna cover is the following. Um, you can actually see which ones are wrong. If you can go to the next one, please. You see every single item, um, the data for every single item. And you can see here that, let's say on this assessment, question number five, they're missing out a lot. This is my approach when it comes to, to giving constructive feedback and using uh, Edge Elastic for teachable moments. Let me go ahead and show you how I do it. So let's say that all of you got number five wrong. I'm gonna tell you, okay, can everybody look at my screen? I'm gonna be covering number five at this time. So I go into my test. So let's pretend that I assigned this sixth grade math category two, 2017. And I tell them, everybody's looking at my screen. I go to my preview and go to number five. And in this question, I can actually click on the scratch pad and tell them, okay, everybody look at my screen. And at this time, I'm gonna be explaining number five. And then I go over the points, reading the question with them, setting it up. And then I don't give them the answer. I just use it as a teachable moment. And um, it's not going to get written on it because once you exit, you come back to it, it gets reset it again. All right, so this is how I use it for those times that everybody's getting a specific number wrong. And it is your test, you call the shots in your class, you know, and um, that's basically what is working a lot for me because sometimes the students, they just need a little refresher. Sometimes they are messing up on the formula or they didn't read the vocabulary words. Um, they forgot to simplify, they forgot to substitute, they forgot to do something. And that's how I use it uh, for my students. All right. And next, I think that should do it, right? Let me see. Yes. Okay, so that's basically it, uh, how I use Edge Elastic. And uh, I just wanna encourage you to ask as many questions as you can. Uh, I'm a kind of person that's a little bit shy, so I try to learn it on my own until I attend the webinar and I find out so many other things it's like, oh my God, I should have asked before I put it into practice instead of class assessment. So uh, I just wanna say that it is a very amazing resource that it's free for teachers. Uh, so make sure that you use it and you ask questions. And if there's anything, please put it in the chat. Uh, don't forget my email, jayontiveros at uisd.net if you want to have access to all the pre-made um, assessments by category. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jessica. That was really awesome. Um, I can't believe how organized you are. That was a lot of really awesome assessments and organization there. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks for um, showing us kind of both sides of how you're using the account and then also the questions that you're looking at as well. That was really wonderful. You're getting a lot of nice compliments in the chat. Um, and yeah, take her up on that. Uh, search her name and, and check out the assessments that she's been using with students. All right, on to the next presentation. Now I would like to introduce Charles Ann Rainey, who is an Algebra One teacher in McKinney, Texas. She loves using Edge Elastic to give her students instant feedback. So Charles Ann, I invite you to turn on your video and audio and take it from here. Hi, um, you can go ahead and go to my next slide, I guess. So I'm Charles Ann Rainey. This is only my fourth year teaching. Um, I started using Edge Elastic way back whenever I was a student teacher. So I've actually been using Edge Elastic longer than I've been teaching. Um, I also do student council at my school in McKinney, Texas, and I also coach the girls golf team as an assistant. Uh, so I, I wear lots of hats and Edge Elastic helps me save so much time with my students in class. Um, so 
I go ahead and go to the next slide. I use Agilastic for a lot of the same reasons that Jessica uses Agilastic. And so I wanna share a couple of things. Number one thing that I think is the most beneficial, not just for me, but obviously for my students is the immediate feedback. Like, and I think that's that goes for all digital assessment. Um, but Agilastic is just my favorite digital assessment because of that second bullet point, which is the variety of question types. So immediate feedback, you know, that comes a lot of different ways. Like, I mean, you could give your students a bubble sheet and then go scan it and be able to give them immediate feedback that way. But it's not the same as having all the data and everything that Agilastic provides. So it's my favorite immediate feedback. Um, here is my Agilastic. Go here. So I'm not quite as organized as Jessica with all of my assessments, but I do love to create assessments. I mostly use Agilastic for formative assessments. Our tests we usually do on paper still right now, but I know that all tests are going digital, whether, you know, I think people have different opinions about that, but whether you love that or not, um, tests not just in school, but tests to certify you for your um, jobs are all going digital. And so I think that tests are something that we should be preparing our students to take online. And so I use this for formative a lot right now, but I, I see us maybe using it more for our summative assignments in the future to prepare our students for star tests like Jessica was talking about. But th these are um, some of my assessments. I wanna share this quadratic transformations one specifically to show one of my favorite question types, which is a graphing question type. Um, this is new. We used to only have linear graphing, but something that I always wanted to be able to assign my students was like a quadratic question type. And so recently I was so excited to be able to assign uh, transformations of quadratic equations. And so the students just click on the parabola and this is a transformation where this parent function would move down six if you're not familiar with the math there. And they would be able to just graph that. And you know I could either give them the option to check their answer and get really fast immediate feedback or obviously they would get feedback at the end of the assessment and so not having to go through and grade a million graphs and count and make sure that they put their parabola six down from the parent function saves me so much time and they absolutely love being able to know if they're on the right track right away so that's one of my favorite question types um let me find some others i'm just going to go to new test and we'll just create one and we'll just call it a uh, test. <laughs> um, so I teach grade nine, so I'll just put that and put math. I will say that I've, I obviously have my experience with all the math question types, but I've presented at Jelastic at my campus. And a lot of the teachers that come back so excited about it are not from my department. And so, um, if you are new to Agilastic, I really encourage you to just like get on and go through all of the question types on your own and just kind of play with it. I think that's the best way to learn any digital tool. Um, but let's say I wanna add a new item, create an item. I like to create, obviously you could just choose from the questions that are already there, but I like to create. Um, and let's see, on the math section, one of my favorites is the expression and formula. Um, if I wanted my students to, um, let's see, uh, solve, and then I have, you know, an equation, like, uh, let's make them distribute and solve it like this. I don't know what the answer really would be, but let's just say this has a great, great, great math keyboard. Um, and so you can type any type of math that you would ever need in pre-cal, calculus, algebra two, any of that. And their expected answer here, you can change their keyboards. But my favorite part is, let's just, we'll just do the basic. If their answer is like X plus two, 
um, this is a pretty simple one, but the evaluation settings is amazing for math teachers because if you wanted them to simplify, you have options for fractions, expression forms. I don't want to bore you if you're not a math teacher, but um, if you want them specifically to enter, you know, certain types of everything's in here. I was helping an algebra two teacher one day who was looking for, I think this, um, they were doing domain and range or something and they needed to make sure that everything was in interval notation. And I said, it's in there, you just have to find the right checkbox. And so you just kind of can go through here and make sure that your answer, their answer is gonna be graded exactly the way you want it to be graded. And sometimes for me, that means leaving it where it's gonna evaluate all mathematically equivalent expressions the same. Like I want X is greater than two to be correct, but I also want two is less than X to be correct. And sometimes you want it to look exactly a certain way. So it just is amazing that you have so many evaluation settings for math. Um, I think I saw someone said in the chat that one, oh, I have to enter that test name again. One amazing feature in, I use snap quiz a lot if I already have a PDF of an assessment made, but another thing you can do is take screenshots of an assessment you already made. So I'll show that. Um, I recently did this where I think it was, I think I still had it as an expression and formula, but you can enter so many like special things into your question. And so sometimes in a hurry, I might just add an image. And if I have, if I've already taken like a snippet, a snippet of my assessment like this, and or actually I guess this was already in multiple choice. You could just screenshot your assessment and add in pictures and then you don't have to type the math. You can add video, um, tables, images, links. I think I've added a video before into a question, but there's just an insane amount of features there. And so um, I think I remember in my student teaching that I was excited about Edge Elastic. And at this time, I was also overwhelmed with how many features there are. I think a lot of teachers have that same feeling when they start to go through all of the different question types. So I don't want to go through every single one, but um, I know that if you have some time to kind of play around, if you dream it, I feel like Edge Elastic can do it. Um, let's see. Oh, snap quiz. I guess I'll show that. So I'll cancel this one. Another thing I do that I think this is really helpful for teachers of all subjects is the snap quiz option. If you've never used this before, I'll show it really quickly. Um, I will upload. One, this is like what me and my team regularly use on our campus is a PDF that would look a lot like this. And so I'll just call it uh, GCF. I want to show how easy it is here. So if you're a teacher that already has like a, a whole Google Drive or some kind of um, curriculum set up where you have a lot of PDFs, they've improved Snap Quiz where you can upload the PDF. And it, there used to be less question types here. Um, but if you are needing to do like math or any other type of question type and just add it to your math one, assessment, then you can type in whatever the answer would be like to number one. You're putting me on the spot here. That would be like three X and then X plus three. No, I did that wrong, three X x plus three you can just add that question to a pdf and be 
done in seconds and assign this to your students. Um, yeah, so I talked about math friendly keyboards. PDF, I think this works really well for everyone. I think the history teachers at my school were most excited about like just being able to upload a picture of like a map. They use like the labeling question type, which I haven't used as much, but let me go to that. That was a favorite at my campus. Once again, there's, there's so many items like already made, like those assessments that Jessica made. But if you wanna create and align it with something that your team is already doing, if you're already very organized and you already have kind of questions that you want, um, but you just wanna make it like digital and easier to assign to your students and easier to grade, there's all these question types, I think. Uh, Eliana, do you know where that, like some of this has been reorganized for like the labeling thing that- Yeah, I go to fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is my favorite among history teachers. I know we're focusing on math because that's our experience, but- we, we do have a lot of math teachers in the audience too. So they okay, are good. what you're sharing from- Good. Yeah. yeah, but basically like any assessment that I- could think of making digital in and making question types that are not just like that basic multiple choice. Um, it seems like I've always been able to find a way to do the coolest question types in Edge Elastic. And so there's, there's so much here, but I think that's, I really think that that's something that everyone should like just play with. It's better to do that. Um, so I also wanna share um, the, what was I going to say? I guess I'll just share. This is kind of something that Jessica already showed, but this is an assessment. This is what it would look like. And this updates in real time. So as I assign this to my students, I can see their name and each question individually, but I can also see how they're doing as a class and it updates live. Something that I did, my student, my cooperating teacher, whenever a student teaching showed me that he would like minimize this window all the way to just the live class board. And he would put this on his presentation screen, like on his projector and let the kids see how they were doing as a class as they went. That was before, like check answer was a thing on Edge Elastic. Edge Elastic is always improving. If you're wanting a feature that's not already on there, it'll probably come. But back then, five years ago, um, we didn't have the option to let our kids check their answer on each question, but he would put this live class board up on his board. And some of the kids would figure out to go through their test really fast and be the first one up there to see um, how they were doing. But um, it also was so helpful later as the kids got through an informative assessment, they would look up and they would see, okay, like a lot of people are missing five, six, and seven, and everybody's taking a lot of time on number six. And they would use this data just like we do as teachers and be looking and then looking back at their paper and going back over those questions and checking them. And so that's something that I still use from my cooperating teachers. Sometimes I'll put this live class board up on the screen and a warning, once you do it once, your kids are gonna ask, every time you do a formative assessment or if you do a test like this, um, can you put the, can you put our progress up on the screen? Because they love being able to see how they're all doing. And so that was really helpful and fun whenever I first learned that from him. The other thing that, I don't know if Jessica talked about this, but the other amazing thing about Agilastic is being able to redirect. And so if, you know, um, gray eraser, <laughs> Uh, brings me his paper and says, I missed these two questions, but I know exactly why, and I just entered them incorrectly. Then you can just go on to Edge Elastic and click the check mark on that student's little box and click redirect. And then you have a bunch of options for when you want their new close date to be and what you want them to see all of the questions or just the ones that they got wrong. Um, and then if you want to leave them feedback, if 
I wanted to click on green eraser first and go in and put feedback on the individual questions that he missed. You know, if I know why he got six instead of 24, then I could give him some feedback in this. And is, does that not let me right now, Eliana, because I'm in the present mode, I wonder? Uh, it might. Okay, I haven't tried that before. You should be able to grade um, when when you're on this mode, which allows you to grade anonymously, which is kind of okay. nice. Um, but it could be something else. Okay. It's hard to do these things on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually, you know, you'd be able to leave feedback here, and so then when you redirect, if you want to redirect where they can see that feedback, then that's that might be something to help them see what happened between their their answer and the correct answer. I see that your assessment is done. It's not in grading anymore. So because it's in done mode, then oh. that's why you can't grade it anymore. Yeah, so um, that's all I have. I just, I love Edge Elastic so much and I, I know um, it saves me tons of time. I wonder what fraction of that what did you say, 250 years or something yeah. is my portion that it saved me. But um, it it's like every time I go to make a lesson more fun and digital, like Edge Elastic is always the thing that helps me do it for my kids and for me, like making the best question types and giving, the, I have so many options and features for how I should assign it to them and, and what feedback they'll get and when they get that feedback. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. And that was really awesome. Um, and I really love that story about using the live class board up on the screen to share with students and thought it is cool to see how motivating it is to share how everyone's doing. Um, and I also loved your quote that if you can think it up, Edge Elastic can do it. Um, yes, and it seems like if if Edge Elastic doesn't already have that feature, it will be coming down the line. <laughs> That's right. If there if it isn't there, uh, don't be disappointed. You can send us an email at support at edgeelastic.edu with your feature request. And our product team reads every single support ticket that comes through. So uh, your thoughts and dreams will be considered. And that really is how we drive the product. So kind of like what I said earlier, um, Charles Ann and Jessica are both on the Edge Elastic Innovator team, which is kind of like our teacher advisor group. Um, we work closely with teachers, educators, customers to help guide the product and make it the best it can be. Um, so your feedback is important to us. Um, okay, and I'm seeing some uh, nice compliments coming through for you too, uh, Charles Ann. Marella just said, great. thanks, great information. All right, so I have a couple more slides and then we will open it up for questions. So um, next slide. Oh, so we are supposed to have a third presenter today, Kashika Smith. Um, unfortunately, uh, Houston's been hit hard with the power outages, but you can still learn from her. She's been featured in the Innovator Spotlight on our website, and Jan's gonna share that link in the chat. We have a video interview with her and other information about how she's using technology in her classroom to help drive student learning. So I encourage you to check that out. It's very inspiring. Uh, oh, and now we are here and ready for questions. So, all right. So I'm at this point, I'm gonna invite um, our panelists to turn on their video and their audio. And also for um, anyone who is with us today to go ahead in the chat and in the um, Q and A, you can ask your questions. Eliana, I already saw a couple of questions about like 504 and SPED. I teach two inclusion classes and it's been amazing for that because um, I don't know if this is a free feature, the um, like the text to speech, is that that's out there for everyone or? That's premium. Okay. Okay. Well, I use that. And so if you, if you do, you know, want to get the premium, I, I have it where like I choose my students that have, that need you know, it read to them. And so all formative assessments that I use through Elastic, they have that. Um, but also it's just helpful because of the redirect features and the feedback. You could go in and give your students who need more tries, as many tries as you need to give them. Um, 
And there you go. You got free trials of teacher premium. So if you want to try to text this week, um, is the, I don't know how much stuff is teacher premium and what's free, but because I've been using teacher premium since, since I decided I needed it. Um, but there's so much out there that was already free. I just, um, the, when you, when we go in and do the, um, check answer tries per question. That's just, that's like the same for everyone, right? Yep, uh, that is uh, also a premium feature, check oh. answer tries. Yep. That's still something that I sometimes am inclined to do more for my classes that have my, you know, sped kids and maybe less for some of my more advanced classes. There's just, there's so much, whether you have premium or free. I think there's so much differentiation that you can do with Edge Elastic just because of the redirects and just being able to give them, you could give some students access to the live um, scoring and maybe some not. And, and Jan just shared a couple of blog posts about using Edge Elastic with ELL learners that you can look into on top of uh, what Charles Ann just shared. Um, I see. I want to share, uh, just if I can say, uh, how I share with my um, SPEDs and special um, my special demographics, I actually just record myself and then allow them to watch a video. So I set up, I don't know if, let me present my screen. Sure, go for it. So I have a YouTube channel for them to, I know, <laughs> and they keep track of my subscribers <laughs> and my views. My kids are so awesome, honestly. Uh, so if you can see here, I actually record myself using the preview of um, the, ass the assessment that I assigned. So I will let them know how to set up the problem, the formula that they're using and whatnot. So whenever I assign it, especially for homework, they'll have the video to work with alongside. And uh, it actually helps them a lot, especially because in our city, we have a lot of uh, students with um, limited English. And uh, so it's very diverse. We have so many learners, so many type of learners in our classroom that that's why I actually go ahead and record myself explaining each problem that I think they're gonna be struggling with. So that's how I reach out to the special population. Um, I know that there's a feature for the text to read the text, I think. I think I just saw it, but I don't know if it's available uh, on the free version. Yep, that's the text for speech, text to speech, and that's a text to speech, version. correct? Yes. So there are so many features on how to differentiate instruction, especially for the different uh, learning types and levels that you have in your class. So awesome. Thank you. That's those videos are very cool. Um, very helpful, I would imagine, for students. Uh, you had a little shout out about thanks for the tips for helping special populations. Um, and then someone asked, is the SNAP quiz available in the free version of Edge Elastic? And the answer is yes. SNAP quiz is available to everyone. It's an easy way, as Charles Ann, Charles Ann sh shared earlier, to uh, upload assessments and share them online. That is by far um, a favorite on my math hallway. A lot of our teachers, they, they'll they have um, like teachers pay teachers, geometry assessments. And so being able, especially right now, we're all teaching um, simultaneous virtual students and in-person students. And so every class period we've got Zoom and our kids in class at the same time. And so then being able to take those pages that they already have and upload them into snap quiz is amazing. Awesome. Um, all right, another oh, brand new to Edge Elastic. How do kids log on? They have, um, if they're using Google Classroom, they could just log in with Google and it, uh, it, will, uh, it will just allow them to give access you know, to everything, pretty much other accounts. And so they just need to click yes to everything or allow to everything and they'll be able to, to do that. Uh, you can easily upload the, your, your roster from Google because it's linked. So it's very neat. We don't, 
use Google Classroom um, in at McKinney ISD, we have Canvas and I wish we had the enterprise version because I think that integration would be easier. But what I do is, um, can I share? Yeah, um, go for it. On my Jelastic, when I go to create a class, I don't think this will show my students or anything. Um, if you have test, <laughs> looks like I've named a class that before. <laughs> if, uh, so that already exists. Let's go to that one. <laughs> Maybe. So if you create a class and then that's my husband and me. Um, if you add multiple students, if you have a list of like the student email addresses, which I can easily download from like our grade book, then I'll just copy them all into here and then it, it adds them to the class. You can also just use the class code, but I like to have control over it and not let my students enter the class code and make sure that they're already in before. And so I just use all their Google usernames from our school that way. But there's so many ways that they can get that you can control whether or not you just want them to up, enter the code or you can do it through Google Classroom and sync it or you can add them through first and last name if you have something else. But I, I prefer this one because then I just have them log in with Google even though we don't use Classroom. Awesome, thanks for sharing that. Um, and then I have one more question for you both. Um, and before that, I do want to mention that uh, Edge Elastic is free forever for teachers. You can sign up for an account and you can do so many things just with that account. Um, so I recommend just using that, use the free account. And if you realize that you're going to want the upgrades, look into it. We just announced free teacher premium trials, two week trials. You can check it out and see if it's for you. Um, we do have a lot of teachers who use the free account and they're happy with it. We also have a lot of teachers that upgrade too. So whatever works for you, whatever tool is going to help fulfill the gap that you have with your students. And also we realize that you know, teachers have a lot of different um, budgets and resources available. So uh, we like to provide those options for everyone. Jan just linked to that in the chat. And then I think we have about five minutes left. So maybe Charles Ann and Jessica, if you could each um, let us know um, in within about one, one or two minutes, uh, what uh, is your top advice for teachers who are new to using Edge Elastic? Uh, okay, so my advice to you guys when you are using Edge Elastic is to always clear the search bar because I know when there was an update, I was a little bit lost and I was like, what is this? <laughs> how, do I, how do I get to where I was? So uh, I was a little bit confused, but then I just realized, okay, you know what? Like just remember to clear everything. And also it's very important to, to sync your, your your roster with either Canvas or Google Classroom so that, you know, if you get a new student, that new student gets added and he will have access to the assessment. Uh, another thing to consider is when they're gonna submit onto the last question, there's a submit button and then it takes them to a new page where they can go back and review, you, you see a bunch of tiles and then it will ask them to submit if they want the grade. So they can go back to check, but they'll have to submit. So they kind of have to click submit twice. So submit on the last answer, then it takes them to the review page for all items, and then they'll have to submit. Um, so basically, I mean, like everybody else said here, Edge Elastic will save you a couple of years from grading and from frowning and squinting. <laughs> and so uh, you're really gonna save yourself a lot of stress and you're gonna just have a better ride, especially in this pandemic, believe me. Uh, it would just make a lot of things a lot simpler than, you know, it doesn't have to be that difficult. We don't have to make things more difficult and Agilastic definitely just simplifies everybody, everybody's lives, especially in teaching. Awesome, thanks, Jessica. Yeah, wow, she said all of the, the, the ones that are very important at the beginning is just 
making sure that your classes are set up correctly and um, the students sometimes will forget to submit. I would also just say maybe, I love using Angelastic for formative assessments. Maybe try it out if you're brand new on a formative assessment that you can, that you have more time in class for. Um, Cause if you can try it out with your students in class and kind of like be looking at their screens and then looking back at your screen and make sure that making sure that everything is going the way you want it to go. Maybe do that a few times before you assign it for something that maybe is like a summative assessment or something that you that's more important to the students and to you. And um, so maybe even try it for something that you're not planning on putting in the grade book. And I also just always am encouraging people to just play around with it when they're not necessarily even creating an assessment. Just the same way I learned every digital tool is the way that I learned Edge Elastic really well. And that was just to ask a lot of like, what if questions, like, could I make a question that does this really cool thing and just kind of dream it up and then mess around with the question types and see if you can do it. I love that what if approach, that's great. Um, uh, uh, Jessica, there's a question. I know that I said that was the last question, but there's a question in the chat for you. Um, when he made those videos for special populations, was that using a separate program or was it with, within Edge Elastic? So how did you make those videos? Uh, so I basically just went ahead and clicked on my assessment on the preview tab, and then I used uh, Bloom or Screencastify, and then I uploaded to my YouTube channel. So basically I open my Edge Elastic, I click on the preview assessment, then I click on the scratch pad and then I'll record myself through every single problem. Uh, but yeah, most I mostly use Screencastify because it allows me to just directly upload it to YouTube. And uh, the only thing is that it only allows you five minutes recording mm -hmm. time if you do not upgrade, but it's more than enough. I don't make my videos five longer than five minutes because of their attention span. So yeah. <laughs> Good thought. All right, well, we've reached the end of the hour. Um, we've answered a lot of awesome questions. We've had a good time. We've learned a lot. And so I'll uh, end it with this. Thank you everyone for joining us. Please stay in touch. Thank you, Charles Ann and Jessica for your wonderful presentations. They were super informative, really great, applicable, you know, take it and apply it right away information there. And thanks everyone for joining us. All right, I'm gonna end the webinar. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good night.